Hello and welcome to the Dully Box Podcast. This is the second one of September. I don't know what a number it is, but it's something there. Got a, a lot of news, specifically breaking news. This never happens. There's actually a lot of PlayStation stuff that came out today, including the news of the price and release date, which is uh, pretty important if you actually want to buy it, which might actually be an option now because the prices are pretty good. It's been a while since the last one, so there's actually been announcements on the Xbox Series X and S new console uh, prices and release date, so we can have a nice comparison between the two. So let's get straight to the numbers. This is the important section. It's the PlayStation 5 uh, with a disk drive at 499 500 if you're uh, not dumb. And the PS5 no drive without a disk drive. I think that's the only difference at 399. So there's a hundred dollar price difference, 500 versus 400 dollars flat. And then for the Xbox side, we have 499 for the Xbox Series X, the most the powerful machine. And then the uh, Xbox Series S, the new one, which actually has uh, no disk drive and only supports 1440p, no 4K but it apparently has a bunch of other enhancements that, that isn't really clear. It's it's like the disc, disc version, but there's also no 4K, so it's a little bit worse. That one is uh, 299 so that's 300 versus $500. So there's a $200 price difference there. So really the prices are the same, you know, PS5 with disc versus Xbox with disc, you got 500 versus 500, and then the uh, PS5 no disc drive, that's the only difference, Versus the Xbox Series X, which is a 1440p machine with no disk drive, also is a uh, 400 versus 300 dollar. So the Xbox is cheaper, but again, it doesn't do 4K. So there's a big, big change there. Big, uh, I don't know, the big choice there. If you want to go cheap, you you aren't getting 4K. But uh, if you want to go somewhat cheap, you can go 4K with no disk compared to uh, some 4K. I don't know. It's uh, it's a big decision, but mainly, it, uh, to me, it's about what kind of console you actually want, what kind of uh, experience you want to get, and what kind of a, uh, I don't know, money in your wallet you currently have. Because, I mean, in power-wise, yes, the Series X is, you know, technically better or whatever, it, just as it was with the PS, PS Pro versus PS Xbox uh, what was it? One X, right? Technically, the One X was better, but you know, they kind of look the same. If you, if you look at them side by side, they're almost similar. That's kind of the situation we have again. Microsoft, you know, doing it better, but uh, PlayStation has games. So what can I say? There's Game Pass on Xbox, but now with the new introduction, PlayStation may have some competition, which is the second biggest news. But first, release dates. So the Xbox, both Xboxes, are going to release on November 10th, 2020, the year of uh, hell. And then PlayStations are releasing November 12th, so two days apart. I don't think that's really going to matter unless there's a huge supply issue. Maybe you want an Xbox for, for some reason, I don't know, and then you run out, and then they're like, yeah, you can't get any. And then you come back two days later and you get a PlayStation, I mean... I don't, know. I don't know what the, the th theory was there. They're, they're so close to each other. We just got these news of the dates. I mean, Xbox didn't even want to talk. Neither of them wanted to talk. And then it got leaked originally that the Series S came out. And uh, then they were forced to basically release the prices and date at the same time. Then now there's new, this new PlayStation one, which is like out of nowhere. And suddenly, suddenly they're both ready. I don't know. Why didn't we get these prices way earlier? I mean, they don't seem crazy to me. Aren't the normal prices for consoles like 400, 450 already, and now they're 500? So it's just $50 difference. That's not the biggest deal. A way bigger deal is like the increase in games, which is supposed to be from 60 to 70, $10 difference. But if you buy five games, that's 50 bucks. That's already the price that they're increasing. I don't know why you, why'd you take so long to release these prices if they aren't that crazy. I get the Series X, the Series S, 
because it's like it's undercutting PlayStation. It's 300 versus 400. So they really want to win there, but they released it right now and it's already it's already winning. I mean, they're PlayStation's not going to go lower, so you're you're clearly winning the day with this cheap console. I don't know. It's a, it's all over the place with that play. I don't, I don't know what they're doing, but prices are now out. We know what's coming out. They're both not amazing on release. They got a couple games. Nothing uh, too groundbreaking, unless you're super into Spider-Man, the, the standalone DLC-like thing. But both the games are just kind of okay at launch. However, PlayStation also announced some big news, which is the PlayStation Plus Collection, which is available at launch for the PS5. Don't know if it's for PS4. Might be. It's a bunch of PS4 games, basically. It's their their reaction to Game Pass, which took quite a while, but it's actually what I think is a better deal. The PlayStation Plus Collection is, again, available at launch, and it includes a huge amount of PS4 games. Just like available launch immediately on your PS5. So that means, I guess we're getting backwards compatibility. I mean, they, I doubt they remade all these games to run on PS4, PS5. I got the numbers. Like natively, so it must include some sort of backwards compatibility, but either way. The current games that are announced for it, again, available at launch on PS5, is God of War, Bloodborne, Days Gone, Uncharted, I think it was four. I don't. I, I don't remember which. I think it was four. The last one. Rash and Clank, the new one, the new remake, not the new new one, the one that came out a while ago. That is a movie that's not that good. That one, not the one that's not out yet. That Rash and Clank, Infamous Second Son, Last of Us, the first one, which is remastered on PS4, and uh, some other kind of weird games, which is Arkham Knight for some reason, Last Guardian. Which makes sense. Persona 5, which I think was exclusive. That came to Xbox. Detroit Become Human, which is exclusive. And Resident Evil 7, for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know why Resident Evil 7, and I don't know why Arkham Knight. Those aren't exclusive. They just kind of threw them in there. Maybe because there's a new Batman game coming out. Again, not Batman. But Gotham, new Gotham game coming out. And because there's a new Resident Evil game coming out. I don't know. But also, Resident Evil 7 is also on Game Pass at the same time. Uh, they got some weird stuff. But the big news, for me at least, is this even news? This is, this, I don't think this is even confirmed, but this is what it seems like. Is that all these games are included on PlayStation Plus, which is their like Xbox Live altern- alternative. You pay for it, you go online. I don't know what else you get. You get like a game every month or something. I don't know how that works exactly. But you pay for that, and these are all included free. Free. No Game Pass. Game Pass is extra. You have to buy gold, and you have to buy Game Pass. This, you buy just the online service instantly. Get all of them. Again, they're not probably permanent. They're probably like a rental kind of deal. If you stop paying for the PlayStation Plus, then it probably goes away. But immediately... And free and one price, that's like a huge deal. And instantly, you know, Xbox, the the series is, uh, they're going for this like whole huge backwards compatibility thing right from the start. But now PlayStation has some pretty good backwards compatibility. I mean, these are the big games. There's no Spider Man. There's no, uh, what was that game? Horizon, Horizon Zero Dawn. That's not there. Um, what else are they missing for the PS4? Nothing nothing too important. These are the big ones. There are no PlayStation 3 games, which is a, you know, kind of a disappointment. I, I, I hope they can get that to work, but I, I kind of doubt it. But if they keep adding to this list, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's very impressive. It's like, this is the reason I would probably get it, is like, because they normally include a, a little discount code or whatever, like a little free trial. And it's like, oh, try PlayStation Plus for a month or something. Boom. Instantly, like 20 games for PS4 that I've never played and I want to play. It's, uh, that's a big deal. It's the same as Xbox. This is almost the same deal. 
But the difference is these games are actually good. Xbox, you know, Game Pass, what do you have? Uh, Gears, Forza, and old Halos. The, there's not much. They haven't been releasing anything good on the, the release front. That's not on Game Pass. That's good. But PlayStation, if PlayStation had a Game Pass, which now they do, now they got some potential. This is big news. PlayStation Plus Collection. But I really hope they add more games. You know, Spider-Man's not there. I understand they're making a new standalone DLC kind of thing. They're re-releasing it, basically. Also, in some separate package for $70, but that includes both. So I get why it's not there. I don't really know why uh, Horizon Zero Dawn isn't there. Maybe because it's just released on PC. But, yeah, they're missing a little bit. They're missing uh, Death Stranding. That's not there. Uh, yeah, the smaller things, but I hope they I hope they get it on that. So that's the big news of PlayStation, the big overall. The console prices, the release date, and PlayStation Plus collection. There were also, on top of it, even more, way more than, play, than Xbox. Xbox just released prices and release date. That's it. There was also a bunch of games. Which is pretty cool. So let's uh, go into the games, I guess. There is Final Fantasy 16, which is a big one. You know, I'm not that into Final Fantasy. I tried 15, and it's it's not a game for me. The, the gameplay just, you know, it's not it's not something I find enjoyable. I like some RPGs. This is not it's not one of them. The only Final Fantasy I've actually beaten is Final Fantasy One. On the uh, Game Boy Advance, so you know, I I am uh, I'm not the target audience. Looked cool, I guess. Visually, they always look pretty interesting, but gameplay looked exactly the same as Final Fantasy 15. But at least it's going back to a actual fantasy, you know, kind of setting instead of this this modern stuff. Last one, there were a bunch of guys driving around in a car. Okay, it's not really fantasy. Maybe it's sci-fi at that point. Okay, you're in a car. But this one seems a more like a medieval type situation. So at least that's cool. And it's also an exclusive. But it also said it was available on PC. But now I'm getting here I'm hearing news that it's it's actually not on PC. That was an error. So maybe it's not on PC. I don't know. PlayStation said they were gonna release a bunch of stuff on PC. They were saying that's another potential market that they're trying to add more games, and this is not one of them. And there's another game coming up that said it was for PC, and then that one is also not for PC, so I don't know what they're doing there. If if they want me to potentially just play stuff on a PC, they're not they're not selling it too well. Like I would maybe buy it on PC if they added every new game onto PC and also a bunch of the old catalog, but I'd, I highly doubt they're bringing the old stuff back. And then if the new stuff's not even coming, then... I don't know. What do they have? Death Stranding and Horizon Zero Dawn. That's it for PlayStation. Like, uh, I don't know. You got to do more for me if you want me to buy a, PS a PC. They probably don't want me to, but I don't know. They're, they're not selling it too well compared to Xbox, which has everything also available on PC. Anyway, that's Final Fantasy 16. Uh, I thought it was pretty funny that, you know, <laughs> The only Final Fantasy, you know, to come out on Xbox, like, day of release was was uh, Final Fantasy 15, and it was not the Final Fantasy 7 remaster that just came out. That game was also not on the PlayStation Plus collection. Um, Final Fantasy 15, it was the only one on Xbox, and now it's uh, back to being exclusive. So, uh, you know, that was the only one I bought, and uh, it was not good, and uh, I think... PlayStation realized that, and what, Square Enix realized that, and they're like, oh, well, um, okay, I guess we're just not going to do that anymore. Never mind. So they released one game. And now Game Pass has, like, the, I don't know, Final Fantasy 7 original and, like, some of the really old ones, but they're going to get those way later. It's like they were testing a market, and they were like, oh, never mind. We'll just backtrack and release this as an exclusive again, like we have with the other 15 games. Anyway, so that's Final Fantasy 15. I'm 16. Whatever. There's too many numbers. 
in Roman numerals, what is it, like uh, XVI, XVI, Final Fantasy XVI, what even number is that? If you don't read Roman numerals, what, what game is that? Anyway, after that, this is in order, by the way, was uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales, which is like standalone DLC. I still, we don't know how long it is. I just know that it, based on the gameplay they showed, which was actual gameplay, it seemed like, it looks like normal Spider-Man. I mean, I don't know. It, it doesn't look different to me. I can't really judge the graphics quality because the stupid stream I was watching was like mediocre at best. It was definitely not 1080. It must have been like 480. I'm talking about qualities. It was definitely no 4K in streaming. And it's, uh, it looks, it looks, it looks whatever, you know, it, the graphics were blowing me away. It, it looked like, because I haven't played Spider-Man, it looked like normal Spider-Man gameplay. Except the guy's in a different suit, and there's hip hop music in the background when he's fighting, and whenever he fights, lightning stuff shoots out. That's it. Looks like the same game. Also, it's pretty funny on the gameplay they showed. He was fighting on a bridge, and he's in New York, and so isn't that where the Avengers game takes place? There's like the first mission in the the new Avengers game, and that you're destroying a bridge on the exact same spot. I thought that was I thought that was kind of funny. But yeah, I can't really judge the graphics. You know, it looks it looks it looks fine. It's also a launch PS5 game, so it can't look that amazing. But it should look better, I feel like. I don't know. Uh, there's only two games I feel like really surprised me, and like, oh, these are these are next gen graphics. Nothing, nothing so far besides Resident Evil Village, which is I guess uh, Resident Evil Eight. That one surprised me. The graphics quality. Look at that chandelier. I, I showed the last podcast. That was. That was an impressive chandelier. That looks really detailed. And then also the next upcoming game after this next game, which is uh, Demon Souls. Demon Souls look really impressive. They showed gameplay. We'll, we'll get into that. Next game that they actually ended up showing was a new Harry Potter game, which was actually leaked about two years ago. And now it's finally, you know, resurfaced. There used to be a leak. And it was it was like screenshots or something of like a generalized Harry Potter game, and it said it was open world or something. And it was I think they said it was from Rocksteady or something, some big company that made something impressive. And so now it's uh, actually announced and going to release in 2021. It's called Hogwarts uh, Legacy. It's nothing to do with Harry Potter, which is kind of surprising. You know, it's kind of weird to, to not say Harry Potter. I, Want to watch a movie? Yeah, let's watch uh, Harry Potter. That means like any of the series. Compared to, hey, let's watch Hogwarts. Like, what were the last ones called? Uh, Fantastic Beasts? Yeah, what happened to those? Wasn't there supposed to be a third one that came out? I don't know. Uh, it's a disaster. People are talking about how J.K. Rowling is going insane. But either way, this game looks cool. It's set in the 1800s of the non not Harry Potter worse, the the... Hogwarts first. I don't know. It takes place in the same school, old school, and it's uh it's created by it says Portkey Games. So I guess they're making a bunch of uh, I guess they're gonna make a sequel of this at least or some some kind of related Harry Potter type game. Not Harry Potter, Hogwarts type game. It's already confusing. We're getting to the Batman territory again. But the 1800s. That's pretty cool. I don't know like anything about that. And, like in general and especially not in the Hogwarts, Hogwarts type uh, universe. So that's kind of cool. I thought it looked cool. Didn't look amazing. You know, it didn't look like a next gen game. I thought the characters and animations were really cool. And I thought if it's open world, that's really cool. But uh, I don't know. Had cool focus, had cool lighting. A lot of these trailers had good lighting, but nothing, nothing that said like hasn't been done before. This game looked a lot like Hitman 2 to me, which is like really good lighting, and then it's okay textures, okay level of detail, like okay elements of stuff on screen. It doesn't seem like anybody's using the SSD's power, you know, to like load and stuff. Like like the Ratchet and Clank, that was another game that really impressed me as next gen power was how Ratchet and Clank um, ripped apart was loading stuff in like seamlessly instantly 
it wasn't instantly. There was like a five second delay. That's another thing. Like they've been talking so much about these no loading screens, and then every single gameplay they show, oh, it's like, oh, here's an actual loading screen. Never mind. What happened to that man? They were talking about, oh, with SSDs, we'll be able to remove loading screens completely. Remember in Mass Effect when you're going up an elevator and it was going for 11 minutes? Well, now it'll be completely gone. And in reality, it's like, well, now it'll be five seconds instead of one minute. Okay, that's still a loading screen. You haven't really removed it. It's still there. It's just shorter. I don't know. That's Harry Potter. <laughs> I didn't see any loading screens, but, you know, the graphics overall, that's what it said to me. And then next, they, uh, they talked about Black Ops Cold War, which I don't know why they threw in. I mean, we already know about this game. It does. It looks fine. It's nothing really amazing to me. It was a campaign trailer. It looked exactly like uh, Modern Warfare. The new one. The non-remake. The non-double remake. The normal Modern Warfare. And it uh, looks fine. That was kind of funny. He quick scopes the guy in the trailer. That is kind of funny. And he misses too. Anyway. Uh, it's It looks it looks whatever. I don't know. It's still too dark. Kind of annoying. Can't, I can't even see the people in the trailer. It's not even like my game running it bad. It's just the trailer. Like, this guy's shooting people out of nowhere and getting kills. I don't know. It apparently does have zombies though, so that's kind of cool. But that's that was just like mentioned, the side part. Still no gameplay of that. I want to see that. Show me zombies. That's what people buy it for. And that's uh, Black Ops Cold War. Campaign is... Uh, it's a campaign. I don't care. I'm probably not going to buy it. I might buy it. Might buy Warzone because that's probably free. Then they showed some uh, Resident Evil Village gameplay. Not really. They didn't show like anything. It was like the exact same thing as the trailer we already have. I don't know. I don't know what they added. Same with the campaign of Call of Duty. It was just like okay, I've already. I've seen a guy shooting a gun. I don't. There's there's nothing new here. This doesn't sell me on anything. I don't. I didn't learn anything. There was a weird thing in Resident Evil Village, which was there was uh, there was some lady talking about some story about like oh is it the past and then it cuts to this weird gameplay of like a 2d adventure game or something and weird art style looked like an indie game that was kind of weird that was new but besides that everything looked the same you could see a werewolf a little bit closer that was it nothing interesting it's coming 2021 who cares i don't know show me real stuff but i get it we get time next they showed death loop which was another trailer that i've already seen like it was it was a different location but the gameplay is the same i want to play the game i don't want to see the game it's not it doesn't look interesting but i know it'll play good you know it's like it's it's hard to explain it's it's one of those games that's not gonna pick up visually but i can tell they're made it's made by the people who made dishonored and prey so i i trust that those are fantastic games but i don't know also, the voiceover for the female hunter was kind of weird. Anyway, moving on. Now that we're done talking about some uh, trailers that I've already seen them before and kind of didn't really need, here's some more. Devil May Cry 5 Special Edition. This game already came out. I don't care. I just don't. It has some guy with katana. Some character. Okay, Special Edition. It's, <laughs> why are we making this? No, Skyrim made a Special Edition. That was a re-release of the whole game. This is just... I don't know. It, it, it looks the same, and it plays the same, and I don't care, and it has one extra guy. Skyrim is like, at least graphics look better. I couldn't tell anything. This looked identical. One-to-one. -one, exact same game. I don't know. Pointless. Next was Oddworld. Soulstone. I'm not interested in this game, so I can't really give a great opinion, but uh, I thought the characters always looked weird, so I really can't connect with that. They showed some other characters of some other species, and they looked kind of cool. But I don't know. The gameplay is kind of weird. I can't. I can't get into this. World's world's weird, and the gameplay is weird. It's like a two D game where you you help citizens travel across or something. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I don't. I, I don't know. I'm not into it. Four out of ten. Next was the Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, which is a new game. I guess. I think this was just announced here. It might have been announced somewhere else, but I don't know. Uh, this one looks like it's open world, which is actually kind of cool because I I didn't play the other ones. I saw some some gameplay on YouTube or something, but those you just kind of play by like you're supposed to be a guy sitting at a computer screen. They just looked at different security cam monitors, but if this one's actually open world and it's supposed to be like a scary horror game, if it, you know, 
I heard the story is good, but I, the gameplay just looks terrible. But this one, maybe. Maybe it's open world. The graphics look good. It looks like it's rendered in like Unreal Engine or something. Something good. Graphics look good, you know, for once. Maybe this one has potential. I'll have to see. Didn't say anything about it. Freddy's and Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. Next. Big one. Demon Souls. Wheel gameplay. You know, a lot of these don't show much gameplay. Demon Souls, just gameplay. Okay, there was a little bit of non-gameplay, but still. It was mainly just gameplay. There was no HUD. So it did look a little weird. It wasn't just like, oh, I'm playing the game. It was a little bit cinematic just because of hiding the HUD. But it was just the game. And it looked really good. It was actually like, oh, this is a PS5 game. I don't think I could actually run this currently. It was something impressive. It was just so, like, so detailed. It was just a night, like, wandering around a corridor, like, slashing through people. The gameplay looked okay. It did look amazing. You know, it is an ancient game at this point. PS3 game that, like, nobody played. A very early PS3 game, must have been. And it's, it looks, it looks great. Look at the, there's so much detail in the grass. There's so much detail in the shine and the armor and the everything, the atmosphere. I will say one thing that was kind of weird was that the the guy, the character, whoever you are, in Dark Souls, you're a un, unkindled person who lost his humanity. I don't know what you were in this game. Some guy without a soul. The guy kept panting like he was out of breath, like the whole the whole game. I hope that's not in. That's that's kind of annoying. Like he's he's walking through a corridor and he's wearing this heavy armor. It makes sense, but he's going through and he's like. <sighs> <laughs> I hope that's not in. I just I don't want to hear that for like twenty hours straight of some guy teething and hoeing just because he's wearing armor. Like I liked the atmosphere. If I can hear the atmosphere, I don't want to hear some guy having to breathe the entire time. Anyway, looked cool. looked looked amazing. Showed more of the game. I only played a very small amount of the original, which looked actually awful. But uh, anyway. This one looks good. This one looks good, improved, and next gen, which is, you know, surprise. Not many stuff has it. No release date yet, though. Kind of annoying. Also, it said it was available for PC, but now we're getting confirmations that it's not. So, I don't know. It has no release date, but it looks it looks pretty done. I, mean, I don't know. I don't know how much, like, the specific map was finished or whatever. I don't know what they'd be maybe tweaking and balancing right now, but it looks cool. Tweaking balancing, definitely. That guy was in the trailer. He was slashing the people like one hit. I don't know about that. Anyway, next game was Fortnite. I don't care. Moving on. And then uh, we got nothing for a while. We got the release date and the, the price, you know, the stuff I already talked about. I'm saying it out of order. And then the very end teaser was like, boom, you know, consoles, price, release date, and also one more thing. And it was Thor. No, not Thor. God of War Ragnarok. Which is, uh, so God of War takes place in Greece, right? That's the original. He's not killing Greek gods. And then in this new one, he, I haven't played it, I don't know. I think he starts, he starts killing, uh, Norse gods, right? So Ragnarok, that's Norse, right? Yeah, I think so. So now he's going to start killing the uh, Norse gods. So that's, that's cool. And 2021. That's that's real close. I'm surprised. They only gave a logo. I mean, they didn't show like anything. It was just like, oh, one more thing. Thor Ragnarok logo done. Get the the Metroid treatment. Hopefully, it does dig forever. But 2021, it should be out. But because they just showed a logo, I have a feeling it's going to get delayed. So, good luck, bad luck. I don't know. We it depends. But you know, I didn't play the original. Didn't play the second one. Didn't play the third one. Now I will maybe play the. Uh, Fourth one, I guess, right? It's it's renamed. Do I need to play the other ones? It's, it's got the Laura Croft problem. Do I need to play the other Laura Croft games if the the new reboot one is called Laura Croft Zero? Definitely could be that. It's, it's even got the Resident Evil problem. Resident Evil Zero. Do I need to play that? Anyway, moving on. That was the conference. Pretty good conference. I mean, a lot of the stuff I've already seen, already heard of, or was not exciting to me, or does not convey to me, but. 
It was real good. It was better than Xboxes. Xbox only showed the price and the release date. That was it. There was nowhere the conference. A lot of the Xbox stuff that just don't show anything I'd even care about. But this one, I I play Final Fantasy 16 over anything Xbox announced, except maybe Scorn. I don't know. Depends. So before we leave the PlayStation topic, I would like to uh, address a couple of questions that I had at the end of this. Uh, showcase that are still not being answered and I don't know if they ever will until we get some actual consoles in our hands in uh, November what's that two months away really like one and a half month I guess two months full no, no, no. anyway here's the questions I got number one does the ps5 play ps4 discs like I don't I don't know they have the uh, PlayStation plus collection it's ps4 games I, I'm not going to put a disc in to put them to play them. They're probably digital. So, do the discs work? Should I should I go into a GameStop and buy them for like two dollars each and then pop them in my PS5? I don't know. You need to tell me. There was an infographic from way before the PlayStation was even announced, and it was talking about backwards compatibility. It was talking about how amazing the backwards compatibility is. Blah 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 blah. You could do it digitally because they thought about it way better. And then there's uh, no news. Is it backwards compatible or not? Like in general, I don't, I don't know, and especially I don't know if it works with discs or not. So it's like, should I buy the disc drive version? I don't know because you don't tell me if it's backwards compatible or not. On the disc drives, the means, the reason I buy them is, it's it's useful because you can buy stuff on Amazon that is used for way cheaper than the actual game. Like I bought. I, I bought Resident Evil, what, 2, the remake? I bought it for like 20 bucks, and it was still on sale for 60 at GameStop, and you can pop in your, your game, your console, and it just works fine. But if you're still buying digital, the prices fluctuate based on the sales. Compared to physical media, if you buy it on Amazon or in GameStop or whatever, or just borrowing it from a friend, it, it's based on how many people are playing it and how many people have already beaten it and who wants to sell it. So it's a time-based uh, situation and also sales-based. So it's a better deal, ultimately, way better deal to buy physical. But if it's a $100 difference, $399 to $499 for the disc version of the PS5, I don't know if I'm going to buy it. you got to tell me if the discs even work. Like, I know the PS5 discs are going to work backwards compatible because they're PS5. But it's going to take a long time for people to start selling PS5 games back as you use the market. It's going to take at least like two to three years for them to be low enough to be worth anything for me to even go into a store and buy them used. So I got to know, can I play PS4 discs on my PS5? Like, is that, can I do that? If I can't do that, I'm not going to buy the disc version because it's $100 for an investment that it won't even pay off in at least three years. <laughs> kind of ridiculous. Number two, are more PS4 games going to be available digitally to the uh, PlayStation Plus collection? Like, I, this wasn't clear. This is brand new. I assume so. But if that's the limit, you know, there's a couple games. Death Stranding, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, Spider-Man, and all the other ones I can't remember. Uh, they aren't there, so uh, do I get those? Like, what what happens? Also, what happens to like Resident Evil Seven? That's not an exclusive, so I assume that must be leaving at some point. But will another game come to replace it? I I don't know. There's also other exclusives that aren't that are smaller. Like, there must be some Japanese stuff or something, right? That's only exclusive in Japan because Sony's a Japanese studio, but. Are those going to come to the service at some point? Or am I just done with a PS5? Like, these are the only PS4 games I get to play. You know, it's a, this is a huge thing that it, it's unclear right now. It's cool, but I want to know how cool, you know? And then finally, you know, it, are, will I be able to play PS3 games on it? That's This is the more, like, at this point, I, I assume it's no, because it's, like, they haven't talked about PS3 at all. I can definitely play some PS4 games, but how many is the current question. But PS3 games, you know, it, can I can I stick the disc in and it works? I have a PS3 game. Don't have PS3. Can I play it? I don't know. You gotta tell me. If I can play it, that's a definite like a disc version buy for me because then I can play everything. But I don't know. 
they're they're all very like do i need to describe or not how important is this can i play backwards compatible or not it, it depends sony tell me or at least at least people will tell me in november but by that point is it already going to be out of stock i don't know i need more uh, i need more answers but hopefully you now they have the price released they have the release date released i think they're becoming more open so i think this will be more clear also what's the ui like you know what's the game the game design like what's what's everything external like what's how's the controller feel all this stuff isn't explained yet but we're about to get it in our hands in about a month and a half two months so i guess we'll get this sooner than later we'll, we'll find out moving on to the ubisoft conference which is actually older it was in between there was the xbox announcement then there was next topic ubisoft showcase and then there was this PlayStation News, which came out today, which you probably won't be watching today. But anyway, the Ubisoft Showcase. This was a while back at this point. I mean, it was still this month. It's not that old. They talked about uh, a couple stuff. It wasn't too impressive. They surprisingly didn't talk about Assassin's Creed at all, which is weird because it is about to come out. Talk about Watch Dogs. Tiny little bit. Nothing really new. But uh, overall, they announced, uh, what is this, two games? Maybe three? I don't, I'm not sure if it was announced already. Let's go in order from from top to bottom. We got the uh, Prince of Persia remastered. I never played the first one. You know, not really sure if I'll. Well, I'm pretty sure I won't pick this up unless it's real cheap. Uh, the game looks okay. It honestly looks just okay. That's the issue. Is it doesn't look doesn't look remastered enough. It's Ubisoft's first remastered game, which is highly surprising because they released an Assassin's Creed collection, which they're outing themselves and saying we completely didn't do anything and just ported it to the console at this point. Uh, Prince of Persia looks... Prince of Persia looks... It's... Uh, it, it looks really cartoony. And I looked up the original and I was like, oh, okay. Well, at least it was cartoony in the original, but then I looked at it side by side and it's like, oh, but it looked like a better cartoony visual style. The new one just looks... It looks weird. It looks like the lighting's really good. But it's like that's hiding how how goofy the faces of everybody looks. It, they all look so like clay, and the facial animations are just okay. And then they had some interview from a lady that was working at uh, Ubisoft India, and she was like, "Yeah, people really like this game. People uh, really expect the. I'm really happy to show uh, India and how." India it is. And it's like, well, have you even played the original? Do you even care about it? And it didn't seem like she cared. This was like the content head, like the big person behind it. And it's, I don't know, it's, it looks, it looks rough. And I think it comes out soon. Maybe it comes out early next year or sometime this year. Uh, I think 2021. I, I forgot. There's a date somewhere. It's, I don't know. Even if I even if it looks good, I probably wouldn't buy it. But now it's just like, ooh, I maybe I just won't even think about buying this. Definitely rough, but it was not as rough as the other games that I am about to talk about, which was the uh, whatever that o stupid Royale game is that they just announced on the last conference. Uh, what was it called? Hyperscape? Is that what it's called? Uh, it's <laughs> That game looks so, so boring to me. I just... I just don't care, and they showed more gameplay of it, and it, I heard it just wasn't that good, and it still looks bad. And they keep showing this stupid gameplay with fake streamers talking over it, and it it, ooh, it hurts me to watch. Don't even want to relook at it. And so that part was in there, and the next there was this weird rollerblade game that looks uh, not good it looked like a wannabe rocket league but there was no rockets and you just rollerblade and then you, you, you're in a little uh, half pipe dome full pipe whatever that is and then take the ball shoot in the hoop and then the game that's the game okay it looks rough it's coming out soon there's a beta and they're like please play the beta so we can fix the game but I don't think you can fix a disaster from happening if it's already in front of you. And then uh, 
they they showed Watch Dogs gameplay and it looked like more Watch Dogs. I don't know. They showed they showed some driver guy that you can play as. That seemed cool. You know, I don't like Watch Dogs currently how they're going with it because it's not serious enough. It's too too goofy. It's too like. Look at me, I'm a hacker. Look how cool I am. I'm a hack. Look, look at the edgy colors. I'm, I'm so into memes, guys. Look at the internet. I'm, I'm the internet man. And that's not why I play the game. I play it seriously. I liked the first one because it was more serious. It was a serious storyline. It was not a good storyline, but it was a serious storyline. And then the, the stealth doesn't seem very good. The shooting was okay in the second one, but it like a pacifist and it's a it, i don't know at least you can play as a i want to play as the new people they showed like the the driver guy sounds cool driver for a heist sounds cool driver guy sounds real there's like a mma guy or something some some bare knuckle boxer okay that's fine i guess it's a little goofy not too much and then there's like a secret agent guy you can play as with the secret agent car okay that's that's a little on the goofy side but it's okay that's kind of cool Play as hitmen that are cool, but then there's all the other stupid ones that are like, oh, play as a construction agent. No, play as a paintball artist. No, play as an old lady with a gun. No, play as a sausage dealer. No, play as the dentist. No, I don't want to play as these people. Why are they in the game? I don't. It just looks bad. They even showed somebody who was specifically like, oh, I am playing as a hacker. That is my occupation. It's hacker. And all they do is run around with like a, a stun gun and stun people. I don't know. I'm going to buy it, but I really hope it's not trash. The game just looks okay. The game just looks okay. It looks like it's going to be more fun than Assassin's Creed, but I hope that's true. Because it might not be. But I don't know. They didn't even show any of that screen gameplay. So who knows. Uh, Watch Dogs comes out first. It comes out October 20th. Pretty soon. It's in like a month. So uh, we'll see. And then they showed uh, Black Ops gameplay for no reason. I don't know why. It looked like Black Ops. I don't care. I, I, nothing. There was nothing interesting about that game. I don't know. There was the classic uh, create a class system. That was kind of cool. That was pick 10 or whatever they were using, but that's it. And then they ended on a banger, which was uh, Riders Republic, which is hopefully good. Which is a game that seems to be, it honestly looked like a an extreme sports battle royale, but that's not what it is. It was like a game, it had like hundreds of people on the screen, and it, they were all writing down different types of extreme sports like uh vehicles and such except one guy who's running for some reason you can uh bike you can mountain bike you can bmx i assume i don't know you can bike definitely you can uh use a hang gliding suit or something you can uh a wingsuit definitely wingsuit you can use a jet suit i don't know what that thing is you can uh ski i'm pretty sure you can snowboard 100 percent you can uh is there anything else is, is that all the extreme sports you can do a bunch of those things, and it's like in a big open world, you do races, or I don't really know what you do. I assume you do races. And there's like trick competitions. There was some snowboarding competition in a water park, which doesn't make any sense, honestly. Why would you snowboard in a water park? Wouldn't it just be ice? Wouldn't that be super dangerous? And also, don't you need to be going down a hill to make that make any sense? But the game looked, it looked cool. But surprisingly, you know, extreme sports. When I think of X Games, I think skateboarding, and it's not in there. It's uh, a bit strange. You know, the the game, it has an open world map. It is an open world game of some sort. And it's based on national parks, which means it would be hard to skateboard in a national park. Because, you know, skateboard wheels aren't really made for that. So I get that. But, like, how are you going to ski in the desert? <laughs> I don't know. Add in some skateboarding. What are you doing? I know, I guarantee they're going to add it in a stupid DLC. And they're going to be like, oh, look, now we got skateboarding. Just put it in for the beginning. Oh my god! It's, I hope this isn't like, like the crew didn't Ubisoft make that? I think I think that was in this conference too, and it was a waste of time. The crew looked like a cool open world game, and it took place in the entire United States, and the gameplay was just so boring. 
He drove around and everything looked the same. It was a it was a town with streets. Who cares? Nothing interesting. And that was it. And hopefully it's not that. Hopefully it's more interesting. It's more like actually individually handmade and crafted instead of generically, you know, Minecraft worlded with a seed or something. But Riders Republic looked cool. It has uh, cosmetic customizations, which are definitely going to be some kind of loot box thing, I could guarantee you. But it, as long as it's cosmetic, it's fine. It looks a little watchdoggy. It looks a little weird. It's got a weird guy with a spiky mask with an LED face or something. You know, that kind of weird. Some kind of giraffe costume. So hopefully that doesn't deter me. But the game could be good. We'll have to see. Riders Republic. That was the only... Real important. There was a Prince of Persia in the Ubisoft, but you know, that's not going anywhere. Riders Republic potential. Everything else, no potential. No real potential. So that is the news. You know, one thing I didn't talk about was the uh, Xbox Series S. The uh, visuals look kind of look kind of weird. I'm gonna be honest. They look kind of weird. They're, it's pretty cool, but it's kind of weird. It's like the size of a big book. Like in thickness, I was told it's like three, three fists high, or three hands high. If you can look at your hand and make it go three times higher, and then the thickness is like, it's like the thickness of a controller or something, or like the what is that? The height of a controller if it was laying down. So it's like a a little bit of a big book, but it has no disk drive. It's just a flat white rec rectangle like it's a rectangular what is that rectangular prism is that what you call that it's a cuboid i don't know and it's it looks cool i guess except for one flaw that everybody keeps pointing out which is there's a big like speaker grill air vent hole thing that's circular for some reason which is fine but then the whole console is white, except the Xbox button, which is, I think, black and laid. So you can tell what the, where the hell the button is. But the stupid air vent is black. And it's this huge, gigantic black dot. It's not small. It's bigger than half the console, and it's on the, the flat side where you would lay it down if it was laying horizontally. Facing up, it's this gigantic black dot. And it, it should have been white. I don't know what they were thinking. The Xbox Series X, Series X, is the thing that stands up tall, and it's it's a big, big rectangle, but it's more cube. It's more like a GameCube that's like twice as high, and it has an air vent on top, and it's black. The whole thing's black, and it's got a little tiny bit of green. That's it. No white. No white. Completely simple, nice and clean. Looks fine. But this one, why does it have black in its vent? It, it just looks wrong. It does not look correct to me it looks it looks weird it stands out so much it's, it just i don't know i uh would wait for them to make that look acceptable honestly like the price tag's great but the looks of it it's like it's like you're paying a hundred dollars for the console to look better i don't know the playstation looks bad ps5 but if they painted it black it'd be it'd be fixed Full black, and that's what they need to do with the with the Series S is paint it full white. Uh, those guys, Microsoft, what's what are they doing? People say it looks like a speaker or like a stove top grill, but they say every console looks like something. They're saying the Series X is the fridge, and then the Series S is the stove top speaker, and then the PlayStation's a router, which I see the least. I'd say it looks like a 360. I don't know. Looks uh, goofy to me, to say the least. But that's the news. And with that, I think that's going to be the the podcast. You know, we've gotten through the news. We we've, we've talked about what matters, and uh, it's it's done. So with that, I think um I think we're done here. I mean, until I, I get more news about backwards compatibility on the uh, PlayStation, uh. I don't know what I'm really looking for. I guess more games in 2021. 2021 is looking like a great year. Uh, 
twenty twenty looking like a look like a terrible. Yeah, I mean specifically what's going on in the news and everything. Uh, constantly on fire, COVID. You know everything. Everybody dying. Black Lives Matter. All got that. All that matters. It's uh hell on earth twenty twenty. But you know it's starting to clear up. I'd say it starts to clear up uh, October ish next month. Then we're going to get some Watch Dogs. We're going to get some uh, Crash, if you care about that. We're going to get AC Valhalla. We're going to get Cyberpunk. We're going to get uh, console launches. And then uh, Call of Duty VR. I don't care. And then we're going to get uh, 2020. A lot of canceled games, but they're all moving to 2021. 2021, we got uh, Deathloop. We got Vampire Bloodlines 2. We got uh, Hitman 3. We got Resident Evil Village. We got Far Cry 6. <laughs> we got some uh, Mario... Something we got Breath of the Wild too probably we got we got uh, Demon Souls probably we we might even ha we have God of War too unless it's uh, can't God of War too God of War Ragnarok and uh, lots of lots of new stuff I mean uh, the year's looking up but uh, it depends on depends on how it really turns out but right now I think everything that was good this year kind of got pushed. And uh, next year, next year, right at the beginning, right after the console launches, right after Christmas, that's where it kicks off. And with that, I'm going to end it. Uh, thanks for watching. This was uh, September Podcast 2. It was recorded on uh, September 16th. And um, uh, I'm out. Thanks for watching. See you.